Okay, welcome back to Economics. This is Dr. Kling. Today's topic is the liquidity trap. It's a theoretical topic that uh, has a, actually a lot of political sort of implications. Um, imagine a situation in which uh, people agreed that we had a shortfall of aggregate demand. So we were in uh, some kind of uh, recession type situation. So this is our short run aggregate supply. Um, you could stick a long run aggregate supply curve over here if you'd like. You have and you have aggregate demand here and I'll even label the axes. I'll put price on the vertical output <coughs> on the horizontal. And so what you want to do is raise aggregate demand. You want to shift the aggregate demand curve here. And then the question is, should you use fiscal policy, monetary policy, or both? Okay, fiscal policy is would be increasing government spending or lowering taxes. Monetary policy would be using one of the tools of monetary policy that we were talking about to expand the money supply and reduce interest rates. And so <coughs> that would be monetary policy. So the, remember the three tools are open market operations where an expansion would be buying securities with mon by creating money or lowering reserve requirements or reducing the discount rate. Those would all be monetary policy. And so which one should you use? And uh, there's there at least hypothetical arguments and sometimes real arguments between people who want to use monetary policy versus fiscal policy. And uh, some of the disadvantages of fiscal policy is that it's slow to enact. You have to wait for Congress, whereas monetary policy, the Federal Reserve can change it in principle quickly. Um, another problem with fiscal policy is you run big deficits. Uh, so that's <coughs> so that makes fiscal policy perhaps less desirable as a tool for expansion. And so you get the, these quarrels and going back to Keynes, one of the arguments about that used by people who favor fiscal policy is that sometimes monetary policy won't work. And that's what we mean by this liquidity trap. So when, <coughs> when will monetary policy not work? And I'm going to say something here. I think a liquidity trap is something like a unicorn. It's uh, an imaginary possibility. I don't think you'd ever see it. But the idea is monetary policy won't work in a liquidity trap. Okay, so here's one version of this unicorn, this, u u this liquidity trap. It is that um, it starts with the notion that uh, lower interest rates are how monetary policy works. <coughs> so I can even put a diagram up uh, to show that. I put uh, we'll, we'll probably discuss this diagram more as we get ready for the AP, but we'll put an interest rate here. We'll put money here. This is money supply. And take it from me, there's a money demand curve that slopes like this. Um, and the idea is that when you increase the money supply, down goes the interest rate. So you're going to see me use causal arrows like this a lot. Money supply goes up, causes the interest rate to go down, which causes, and this is a 
capital I, the investment, to go up, which causes <coughs> GDP to go up. So that's w a standard view of mo how monetary policy works. And then the liquidity trap is when, let's see if I'll just draw the a graph next to this one, a liquidity trap is when the interest rate is already zero. Okay, and now, <coughs> um, so I'm going to, this is in some sense the money demand. And when the interest rate is already zero, uh, you can't get, create negative interest rates. So what happens is the the uh, central bank would keep increasing the money supply and the interest rate would stay at zero and nothing new would happen. If the interest rate is already zero, it can't go any lower and so this, this channel is blocked and that's the liquidity trap. Uh, <coughs> several reasons why I think that this is a unicorn, we've never seen it, uh, one is that the um, the interest rate has not gotten to zero, at least not for more than you know a few days for technical reasons. Even the the most short term interest rate that the Fed plays with, the federal funds rate. Moreover, there's a long term interest rate that affects investment. So not so the federal funds rate is like a one week rate, or actually no, sorry, an overnight rate. Um, so that's the shortest possible interest rate. Uh, you can have 30-year interest rates, like on mortgages, or you can have 10-year interest rates, which might be typical for corporate borrowing. Um, and those, in th the, as you get out to longer interest rates, they don't get down to zero. And so the, the Fed could, by uh, intervening in long-term bond markets, <coughs> as it's done recently with uh, some of its uh, new policy tools we talked about before, the, the Fed can try to reduce long-term interest rates, and since long-term interest rates are never a threat to get to zero, uh, you're not in the liquidity trap. And I would say more generally, from the aggregate supply, aggregate demand perspective, so let's put the aggregate supply, aggregate demand diagram back up there and I'll just put the short run supply and demand. From that perspective you're saying that basically that monetary policy cannot increase the price level because if it could increase the price level however it does whether it goes through this interest rate channel or not <coughs> if it could increase the price level it could move along the aggregate supply curve and increase output. So from this perspective, all monetary, monetary policy doesn't have to work through interest rates. All it has to do is raise the price level. And when you're saying that there's a liquidity trap and monetary policy won't work, you're saying that th the increasing the money supply cannot increase the price level. In other words, you're saying that the, that no matter how hard it tries, the government cannot debase its own currency. Uh, debasing the currency is making the currency less valuable. So what you're saying in a liquidity trap is there's nothing the government can do to lower the value of money. It can print and print and print, and the price level is not affected. And I just absolutely don't believe that's true. If the government prints money, gets it into circulation, eventually prices are going to rise. And so uh, we teach a liquidity trap as an interesting case. 
the, again, the liquidity trap is used, and it's being used today by some prominent economists to argue that we must have fiscal policy, we must have fiscal expansion because we're in a liquidity trap. Uh, monetary policy <coughs> will not work, therefore you have to use fiscal policy. Uh, you'll see that argument, and uh, some people would say that it's consistent with some economic theory, but on that one I have to disagree. I would have to say that the notion that the government cannot can do nothing to lower the value of money, which is really what you're trying to do when you raise the price level, you can think of it as lowering the value of money. The notion that the government can ever be in a situation where it cannot lower the value of money by printing more of it I think is an absurdity. I don't think we've ever observed it, and I don't think we ever will observe it. So sorry for the rant, but um, it, it does teach a little something about economic theory.